Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine, coming to you with the weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. A lot of times, you know, I do a lot of reading and researching and hopefully have a lot of practical experience with seeing patients over 36 years. But um, I read a recent, a couple books I've read recently that uh, I want to kind of go over a little bit, especially this one, and also a TV show I want to go over with you. This one, this book is called The Song of Our Scars, and it's a book about chronic pain. Um, I hope you've seen the uh, documentary called Dope Sick. Um, you can find it on Hulu right now, but it's a really interesting take on, on a very serious epidemic that occurred, that's occurred in our whole country, especially around this area. As a matter of fact, this uh, Dope Sick miniseries starring Michael Keaton, um, famous actor, uh, actually the whole story about uh, Purdue Pharma and the Sackler family um, started around this area in southwest Virginia. As a matter of fact, the opening scene uh, takes place in a simulated uh, courthouse in Abington, Virginia. Um, so the whole thing really started up there in coal mine country because that's a place where there's a lot of chronic pain and drug abuse. But it turns out that they marketed this drug called OxyContin that was responsible for a lot of deaths and a lot of, besides that, a lot of pain and suffering with a lot of families and just untold billions of dollars worth of damage that it did. And um, so you, I highly recommend that you watch Dope Sick and be very wary about how uh, doctors and pharmaceutical companies treat chronic pain, which in this book, The Songs of Our Scars, actually written by a doctor who's a cardiologist at Harvard, um, tells his story of this, and he's done a deep dive into chronic pain. Uh, his chronic pain started during medical school for him, but a uh, in, very interesting story. Another book that I've read about chronic pain is called The Empire of Pain. If you've ever read that one, that's another really good book to read about uh, searching uh, for cures for pain. Because as you know, most people come to see a physician, they, unless they're coming in for a cold or a routine check or anxiety, depression, uh, it's usually because they're tired or they hurt. And acute pain has to be distinguished from chronic pain because the two really aren't real related. Even though your acute pain may lead you into chronic pain, uh, they become very different things. Um, and a lot of it's very complex uh, neurological brain functioning type thing. But and it goes really deep with uh, the psychology, the whole thing with chronic pain. Uh, so chronic pain must be approached much differently than acute pain because you can't treat chronic pain with opiates anymore. At least if you do, you're, you're, you're going to have problems most likely, as we've seen. I mean, we had over 100,000 deaths, overdose deaths this past year uh, from opiates. And, you know, with the fentanyl and the heroin and things coming in, uh, on the streets. It's just incredible what's happening. We're losing a lot of, of great young people to this epidemic. It's just, it's just horrible. But the book tells the story of how we got into this. And a lot of it has to do with marketing uh, by drug companies um, to patients and to doctors. Um, you know, when they came out with OxyContin, it was supposed to be better than medicines like Vicodin and Lortab, which are hydrocodone. This is oxycodone. And they, they, they made it so that it was long-acting. And what they did was they, um, made it, they put a special coating on it, which made it last supposedly 12 hours. And um, when really it was nothing more than just good old-fashioned uh, oxycodone. All you had to do was crush it up or uh, rub the coating off of it, and people would shoot it up, snort it, take it orally, and it really caused a lot of deaths 
and addiction. Uh, that's where this whole addiction medicine thing was born out of. But it turns out, you know, they really lied about it when they, they came out to doctors. And I can remember it because I had reps coming into my office saying that, um, you know, it was less than 1% addictive when it was really 100% addictive. And there was no question about it. So, um, of course, the Sackler family now, uh, you know, is really paying the price for this all over the country. But it just brings... Um, it brings to bear the thought of why do these drug companies advertise direct to consumer and, you know, even direct to doctor, a lot of times uh, can be a, a good thing and a bad thing. Good for information, bad because they can make some claims that may not be true, uh, which they weren't with the case of Oxycontin. Um, so, you know, did you know an interesting fact is that Direct-to-consumer uh, advertising for drug companies is only legal in two countries in the world, the U.S. and New Zealand. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and it turns out with the – then the FDA gets involved in it because they went ahead and passed it like they have several things that, they, that have killed a lot of people they've had to later recall. So in, in this case, um, it was suspicious because – uh, the one of the heads of the FDA that was responsible for okaying that claim that Purdue Pharma made about it being uh, very you know less habit forming than the other forms of opiates. Uh, two years later, he's working for Purdue Pharma, so there's a lot of uh, nebulous things going on that uh, you know with the FDA and and big pharma that. Uh, are not really good, um, and it's still going on to a lot of extent. We need to be better at uh, curbing this type of thing that goes on between the FDA and pharmaceutical companies, even the government. you got to be really careful. Um, so the whole point of this thing is to realize that chronic pain has to be approached from a multidisciplinary uh, standpoint. You really... You really can't just feed these people pills because they're in pain. A lot of times you have to accept that pain is a part of life um, and that you don't have to fear it. And, you know, we live our whole life thinking we can't be in any kind of pain. We have to take a pill for it. But there's other ways you can uh, get rid of pain, including working out, keeping your body in shape, not focusing on the pain. There's a lot of other things that work for pain besides pills for pain. In fact, they've they've everybody knows that nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories are more effective for pain after one year than opiates are. So what happens is you get addicted to opiates and you don't take them for your pain because they don't work for the pain. You take them because of that euphoria they give you and the if you don't have them, then you go through a withdrawal, which is terrible. Um, so, you know, they've come up with some new methods of treating pain. A lot of There's a lot of psychological things, um, a lot of uh, other things, too, like physical therapy, acupuncture. Um, and some people are even able to get on medicines like Suboxone that help them to function a little bit. A lot of times I think that they keep them on the Suboxone a little bit longer than is necessary. Other people may need it for long term, but um, they do seem to function a little bit better. I'm certainly not a Suboxone prescriber, but um, it's interesting when you talk to some of the prescribers, their insight on some of this stuff with chronic pain, uh, because there are a lot of people who actually uh, need medications for this but so it's a complex story i really enjoyed reading the song of our scars and also the empire of pain and if you haven't watched the miniseries dope sick you really ought to look at it and when you have surgery or you break something or you're in a lot of acute pain you better not let it lead to chronic pain or if it does, you better approach it in a wise way and not just depend on a pill to take care of you. There's a lot of other things you can do for chronic pain. 
and that's one of the things that um, I intend to study and get even better at is the older I get and the more experience I have with these pain patients. Um, even, you know, with the uh, medical cannabis now, you know, there's another uh, way that we have to get around a lot of uh, chronic pain issues and the opiate epidemic that we have in this country. I uh, hope that helps. Stay tuned. This is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine. Thank you. Mm-hmm.